Now, of course, on my old channel, Cover Killer, there was a little bit of a playlist, a, a project that I had going on where I documented a lot of albums that, even though they were really, really great, really solid, and you would think that these would be instant classics, well, sometimes they get a little bit forgotten. They get kind of swept under the waves of either the lore of a particular band, either that or just the time frame in which it's released. Well, it's time for me to talk to you about another one of those. Something where, well, we're kind of going back to Cover Killer's past. Going back to whenever I was talking about a lot of forgotten gems. And this is a particular one that definitely fits that to a T. And the funny thing is, is that it shouldn't be all that forgotten. Because it's the most recent in the band's discography. Not to mention their final release. And that's Reconeos by Dissection. Now, of course, everybody who's familiar with black metal should know who Dissection is by now. This is the band that, of course, did the somber line. Not to mention Storm of the Light's Bane. These are classic records. These are records that if you're a black metal fan and you don't own... Get off your ass. But Reconeos was a little bit different than what they did in the 1990s. There was a long hangover between the release of their second record and the release of Reconeos. It's a somewhat uh, lengthy period of almost eight years, I believe it was. This was, it was quite a lengthy period. I mean, now we're kind of used to that. We're seeing a lot of reformations of classic bands from either the thrash era or black metal or whatever it might be. You know, with bands such as Obituary doing albums after a five-year hiatus. We saw Accept do that in 2010, where it was a 14-year hiatus. The same thing was true with Heathen. Uh, Death Angel is another prominent example. I mean, the list goes on and on. I could probably sit here and think and name you five more within the next two minutes, but let's face it, I don't feel like destroying my brain. Now, why this album is a little bit different is because it's a little bit more geared towards uh, what you would call, I, I, I don't know, it, it, it's a very, very weird way to describe it. But it's a little bit less like black metal, but a little bit more like mellow death. Or mellow black. Melodic black metal is probably the best tag in order to use for this particular album. Because if you take a look at it, it definitely gives you that whole melodic side. The riffing is fantastic. This is something that doesn't exactly follow your traditional black metal formula. You don't see that lengthy track. You don't see that ambience. You don't see that real... Uh, simplistic style that a lot of black metal, uh, especially from the 90s, was known for. I mean, if you take a listen to some of these classic albums that a lot of people talk about, from your Burzums, from your Immortals, from your Emperors, really, whenever you look at the Emperor, that's kind of the albums that have the most technicality, the most complexity, the most diversity. The It's insane whenever you compare just how leaps and bounds ahead Emperor really was compared to some of their contemporaries. But the section was kind of along that same boat as well. So this melo uh, melodic black metal jump, well, it might not come as all that big of a surprise to some of you. However, it did to a lot of members of the black metal community, especially considering the section is one of the most classic names, considering the albums that they produced in the 1990s. So while it was a little bit of a shock, well, let's take a look at the album. Well, I gotta say, I do like me some black metal, but I also like me some Reconeos. This is probably the one album from the section that I listen to the most. And it really has to do with just two songs. Black Dragon, Dark Mother Divine. These are two amazing songs. Very exceptionally written. Uh, well written, should I say. Not to mention extremely well delivered. These are songs that capture your attention. Not to mention they're also songs that really deliver whenever you listen to them each and every time. Sometimes you can listen to songs over and over again, and they eventually kind of fade in significance over time. However, these are two songs that will really stick with you. And that's something that really makes a very, very good song. So you really have to give them a lot of credit there. What contributes to this? Well, there's the word that I like to use. There's a lot of atmosphere here. You can especially hear it on Black Dragon with that calm, almost haunting intro. There's a lot of ferocity. There's a lot of good riffing, good melodic death riffing that we've now come to know on these two particular tracks. The lyrics, of course, blend together with the music extremely well. The mix is perfect. Not to mention, you definitely get the feel. You get the feel of what's going on almost like you're right there, as though they are channeling and summoning the Dark Mother Divine, and you're right there to witness it. And that's something that's really cool. All in all, this entire album is filled with songs that are like this, but a lot of times these are often forgotten. And it's kind of sad. Songs like God of Forgotten Light or Hell, Esper is Set, these are great tracks. These are tracks that definitely should be on the minds of a lot more black metal fans, or just metal fans in general. So, I guess this is what I'm saying. If this is an album that maybe has escaped your grasp, something that really has been gone by the wayside in your particular metal journey, revisit it. Give it another shot. 
because this is a really solid album, and it definitely deserves your interest. Just do this. Get yourself in a nice state of mind, however you like to do that. Throw this album on, close your eyes. If you don't feel like you're at some sort of ritual channeling the Dark Mother Divine by the end of it, well, then maybe this album won't ever be for you. But if you see it, if you feel like you're there, and if you see the Dark Mother somewhere in your room, well, you went a little too far. But if you feel like you're there, this is going to be a forgotten gem that you're going to enjoy in your collection for a long time.